There are people that's waiting on you to fade out, fizzle out. They're waiting for your fire to be quenched. They're waiting for you to fizzle out. A lot of people, believe it or not, you see a lot of times, if you're anything like me, I'm just doing the work of God. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not thinking about who's watching. You know, honestly, I, I'm not concerned with that. <laughs> but you'll be surprised who's actually watching you. Guys, you're going to be surprised if you have a channel, if you have a platform, you will be surprised if you have a business You'll be surprised who is secretly subscribed to you. You're going to be surprised who is actually, you know, have another alias and is connected to the things that you're doing. And all they're doing is watching you. You'll be surprised the amount of people that took the time to create a fake email alias so they can be right there on your feed, on your live, on your streams, on your channel. Okay, simply to watch you, to see what you're doing, to scoff, to trip you up. You'd be surprised maybe some of the people that's putting all these, the person that's putting the negative comments on your page or saying certain things is actually someone you know that's just under a different identity trying to sabotage your work. You'd be surprised the people that are challenging you are people that you know. Okay, under different alias. But the very least, guys, even if they're not subscribed to anything, they're paying attention to you. And there's a conversation that's going on somewhere around among your family. Okay, friends, those who know you, co workers, people that you used to party with, people that you used to do dirt with. That's like, yeah, it's all good, but you know, you know how he is, you know how she is. This ain't gonna last. And they're waiting on you to fade out. They wait on you to do like a lot of other people do. Fall away. One minute you're talking about God and the next minute when it gets too hard or it gets tough or you get disappointed or you feel God didn't come through, they wait for you to fall away. Okay? And then they wait for you to say something else. You started off with God, but now you're not with God. Now you're saying something different. Okay? But then you said something different about the world. You said something different about where you came from. And that's why you came to the Lord. That was your testimony. Now you're saying something different about your testimony. And you're going back to the world and back to the ways and back to just being you. After you said in the beginning, according to your testimony, that the world and the ways of the world and being without Christ was not, was not the way to go. So now you're saying it's okay. My brothers and sisters, you will not be trustworthy. You won't be trustworthy. And people are going to realize this ain't got nothing to do with God. It has to do with you. You're confused. You're confused about the world. First, you said the world was this and you're going to the Lord. Now you're saying the Lord is not this, but you're not. It's not that you're going back to the world. You're just going into this middle ground. But I thought you said. That without God, you were nothing. I thought you said there's nothing other than God. So now you're saying something different. Okay. Whatever your reason is, how about we're just going to like not even take it into consideration because you're confused. You, you're just confused and we're already confused out here in the world. So, uh, yeah, you see. When we think to fall away, when you fall away, to you, you may feel like it's just you. You just made a decision. But there's so many people that's going to stand before the Lord because they thought they just fell away, but they didn't realize that there were people that was actually following you and being encouraged. And they were paying attention to the things that you were saying and they were getting close to the Lord, but you were someone they looked up to. And you fell away, even though, yes, they should stick with God no matter what. They were still babes. You realize about 15 or 20 souls lost the way because of your decision, right? I'm not sure why I went there, but somebody might be thinking about it. And there may be people that have, but all, understand this. When you backslid, you took other people with you. But guys, those of you, you are hanging in there. You're holding on. You're standing strong. You're going before you're going before the Lord and you're seeking his face. I want you to know there's people that's waiting for us to fade out, to fizzle out. 
And what are they going to say to you when you fade out? If you fade out, God forbid it will not in the name of Jesus. But what often happens when you fall away? There's people going to start coming around you. Oh, what happened? Oh, we knew that wasn't going to last anyway. You was just going through something, girl. Man, you was just, you know, you was tripping. That's going to be it. We knew it wouldn't last. And they welcome you back. They're happy because it's like a trophy. You see, you'll become a trophy of what everybody had been saying. Have you ever been where you were dating someone or whatever it was, and then you break up with a person and then all of a sudden you have somebody that say, oh, well, you know, I kind of knew all along this person wasn't for you. I had a funny feeling about them. Have you ever done a business venture and, and then when you try this thing, it does not work out for you. And then they're saying something like, well, you know, I had a feeling that it wouldn't have worked out. I felt like you were making, you know, a premature decision, a decision. It's people that always tell you stuff after the fact, you can't trust them because if I was going and you felt I was going the wrong way, why would you not warn me? Why would you not say something? Whether or not I choose to follow you, that's on me. But beware of people that's always telling you after the fact what they thought was wrong. So basically, they had a strong a feeling about it, but they just want to see you get hit by the bus first and say, you know, yeah, I had a feeling the bus was coming. Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to happen. Get away from I had a feeling friends. They're not your friend. <laughs> But guys, just to stick to topic here, stand strong, stand fast in the liberty where Christ has set you free. And it's not that we're doing anything to prove a point, but there's people that's waiting. Why? Because they're used to fading Christians. They're used to fading believers. They're used to believers that saying one thing, living another thing, and then suddenly they fall away. And they have an excuse and they're talking about why it wasn't good in the first place. But yet they've been believers for two years, uh, 20 years, 30 years. And suddenly it's like, look, be honest. You want to live how you want to live. That's it. This ain't got nothing to do with God. You know, one of my things with people that backslide, they don't just some people that backslide. Not only do they backslide, they begin to openly renounce the Lord and salvation and everything and talking about it and so now it's like they have to take some other people with them and that's a dangerous thing to do guys but there are people that's waiting for you to lose your fire they're waiting they know they in their mind they think you're going through this phase but you're gonna fall eventually and they're waiting for it to happen they're watching and they're waiting they're waiting for that one shady little message you're going to put up where they see that, oh, yeah, the foundations are shaking. And when it's all said and done, they'll come back and say, yeah, we knew it. We, we knew that you couldn't do it. You know, it's good. It's good to believe in God. But all that extra stuff that you was doing, you was going too far. You was doing too much. My brothers and sisters, let's not put the Lord. Let's not put him to an open shame. After he has done so much for us on the cross. Let's not crucify the Lord again a second time. Because the truth is, even though he has done such a thing, he has sacrificed his life. He, cru he was crucified for our sins and raised up again. He continues to get slapped in the face and spit on in the face and buffeted upon. More so, not only by the world, but also and more so by his own. Especially those that came to him and then go back and say he is not real and it's all a fraud. This is an insult to our Lord and Savior. So guys, stay strong. They're waiting for you to fade out. But we know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Stay the course and see you at the finish line.